Circuit Equivalent Overview. Circuit equivalents play an extremely important conceptual approach, conceptual approach in reduction techniques in solving circuits. Equivalent techniques typically show the overall behavior of a circuit, and by isolating the piece of the circuit, typically called the subcircuit, one can effectively reduce this subcircuit into an equivalent series or parallel resistance. This greatly reduces the complexity of the circuit solving problem. So, circuit equivalents play a conceptual approach to reduction techniques. These techniques show really two things. One, the overall behavior of the circuit. And when you know the overall behavior, you now know how to deal with it mathematically. But most important is that by isolating a piece of the circuit, that piece is typically called a sub-circuit, one can efficiently reduce this sub-circuit to a single equivalent series or parallel Resistance. This greatly reduces the complexity of the solving process, of course, of current and voltage. In many ways, using reduction techniques to solve circuits is similar to solving algebraic problems. So let's look at an analogy. So suppose you're now going to solve this equation for x. So let's say that you have this equation of x plus 3 divided by 2 equals to 2x. Now, you are 
quite sophisticated mathematically so you can look at this thing and trivially solve this equation, most likely by inspection. So because of your training, of your mathematical training, one envisions the process of isolating X. So one example would be something like this. You would go in and you would look at this equation and the first step that you're going to do you might even not even realize it is that you're going to multiply both sides by two. No, you had to visualize that. And then you're going to take that X to the right side. And when you take that X to the right side, you now have four X minus X, which is of course three X, but now that equals three. So in this process, you find that this is x equal to 1, the solution. Now, this takes a lot of practice, mathematical practice. What we want to do is that we want to apply this thinking to circuits. So, with practice, I will demand and expect for you to look at a complicated circuit what I mean by a complicated circuit that involves series and parallel elements to quickly reduce this circuit using equivalent techniques. Here's another analogy. So very similar to the algebra problem, I'm going to expect you to be able to do something similar to... Um, series and parallel circuits. And the thing about it is that if you don't see it, then you won't be able to solve the problem. So another analogy is when one eats a sandwich, I could have picked a burrito or something else, one bites the sandwich to reduce it into smaller manageable pieces. 
or easy consumption. So in this case, the analogy is, is that our sandwich is going to be the circuit. Our bytes are breaking it down into equivalent and furthermore, consumption is the same as solving mathematically. So, in other words, in reduction circuits, one creates smaller bytes by using equivalents again and again. So, in reduction circuits, One creates smaller bytes by using equivalent again and Again, when one has reduced the circuit sufficiently, One will determine the primary behavior of the circuit. And really, what we're really asking is the circuit primarily parallel or series. By knowing that, we know exactly how to solve this problem. There are four characteristics of N equivalent circuit or equivalent you know, circuit. It has to deal with part of the resistors behave. So we have to talk about resistance. How do resistors in series and parallel behave? And then we're going to ask, what about the currents? How do the currents behave in series and in parallel? How do the voltages behave in series and parallel? And how do power supplies behave in series and parallel? 